Welcome to today's broadcast. I'm reading from the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse number 16 in King James Version. Hold before the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. God wants us to labor in the word. And of course, when the scripture was talking about our pastors, the Bible said we should need them double one up. Because they labor in a world. It's not only the pastors. God will want every believer to labor in the world. And that we shouldn't labor in vain. We should not run in vain. Because it, it, there's a rejoicing that comes in the day of Christ when you hold forth the word of life. How do you hold forth? It's like the game we used to do when we were young, when you hold a rope. And somebody holding it on the other end, they are two groups, and you are dragging each other, and then you are holding it to make sure, say, hold forth, don't fall. How do you hold forth with the word of life? I will explain to you. If you have ever been worried over anything in life, you have an advantage. What does it mean to worry? Is to think over one thing that bothers you over and over until it, it, tears begin to come out of your eyes, until you cannot hold it anymore, you cannot sleep because you are worried. The same ability you need to be worried is the same ability you need to meditate. Everybody who is worried meditates in the negative. Exactly. The same energy you need to profit from the word of God, you have to learn how to be worried about the word of God. How to meditate about the word of God. How to Think about the word of God. So when the Bible says here, holding forth the word of life, is asking you to hold on to a particular scripture and do not let that scripture leave your thought. Do not let that scripture leave your mind. You think about it. You talk about it. You look at it over and over until the world becomes flesh after you. That's what he's saying. I want you to hear the way the NLT put it. That same scripture. The New Living Translation says, hold firmly to the word of life. Hold firmly to the word of life. God will want you to hold on to it. If, as I'm talking to you now, if I ask you to tell me in three scriptures in your spirit, or from your mind, or let me use the normal word that you've been able to cram. If you have to think twice, oh, my beloved, it's because you have not hold on to it. Any scripture you hold on to is at your fingertips. You use them when you are praying. You use them when you are talking. You use them when you are speaking over anything, declaring the word of God. So, God, we want you to hold firmly to the word of God. Hold firmly to the scripture that talks about your marriage, to the scripture that talks about your health, to the scripture that talks about your longevity, to the scripture that talks about your safety. Hold firmly on the word of God. You just need to think on it over and over. When you take a scripture and you think on it over and over, it is called meditation. And the scripture says that things will not profit you except to meditate on them. When you meditate, then your profit will appear unto all. I want to ask you that this weekend you will take time out to take some very special scripture to miss them to, with faith in your heart. You miss them. You ruminate over them. You regurgitate over them until the world become flesh unto you. So if the word of God must profit you, you must learn how to hold firmly to the word of God. I know that the word of God will profit you this month. I know that the level of the word of God that will dwell in you this month will be very rich because that's the plan of God to you. I want you to write it under the, um, the post or the broadcast. I'm holding on to the word of God firmly. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.